Happy Sabbath, everyone. Spend a spirit of prayer. Father, we thank you so much again we could come into your house of worship. I pray that you would be with us. I pray that you would give me the words that I need to speak. And Father, may you get the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This thing just feels like it's just too much in my face. Thank you for that. That was... Yahweh. I, I love that story. But you, th you think about, um, there's some very important elements in, in this uh, world that, that if we don't have, we die. And the number one element is, of course, oxygen. How long can we live without oxygen? Only, uh, only minutes. And then the next element, of course, is water. We can live several days without water. But you think about how fragile life is. And, uh, and, and God gave us this fragile life to, uh, to, to His glory. And we, I, I, in the beginning, we weren't so fragile. What we had, we had, we had the garden and we had the tree of life. We could eat from the tree of life and, and we could live forever. Uh, but we have an enemy. And... Uh, When the Lord tells us something, He means what He says. And He told Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree of life. Or He said that if you eat from the tree of life, you're going to surely die. Our knowledge of good and evil. Amen. So our enemy... You know, the, thinking of another time when God used specific words with somebody, He told, uh, He says, do not touch the ark. And uh, who touched the ark? Uzzah. And what happened to him? He said, don't, so who do, we need, who do we want to listen to? Who should we be listening to the most? You know, in uh, Exodus chapter... 19 and verse 5, you've heard me uh, recite this verse many times if you've listened to me preach. Uh, Exodus uh, 19 verse 5 says, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure. God wants to make us a special treasure. But He's saying, obey my voice. And if you look up that word, Obey in the in the Hebrew it means listen to me, listen attentively to me. So God has always given us this clue that hey, you should listen to me. He says, I made you, I know what makes you tick, I know what you need to survive, and I know what you need for eternal life. Listen to me. Israel. Now, y'all heard me talk about Israel last week, uh, and I, I gave you a lot of technical information last week, and and I, I, I hate to use the word, but, you know, I, even from the pulpit, when we're talking about technical information, it gets kind of boring. And I must tell you that I was bored. <laughs> That's ter terrible to say. But it was a lot of information that I gave you. And this week, I want to speak a little bit more from my heart about the, uh, the nation of Israel. And, I, and I, I, I'm blending it with, with the rest of my sermon. Now Israel is still looking for their Messiah. Do you agree with me? Israel, Israel, the nation of Israel is still looking for their Messiah. Now what does Israel need to do? 
They need, as Ray just said, they need to look in the past. They need to go back 2,000 years, approximately 2,000 years, and they'll find their Savior. Actually, if they look back further, I don't know how they could miss uh, the, the Savior by reading the Old Testament Scriptures, especially the book of Isaiah. And from what I understand, they uh, kind of stay away from that book. The book of Isaiah kind of points directly at the Messiah. You can't, you, can't, you can't miss the Messiah if you read the Old Test, all of the Old Testament. And what did Jesus say in the New Testament? He says, these, uh, these scriptures that you're reading testify of me. So, back to, we have an enemy. And our enemy wants us dead. Now, in your bulletins today, I've got a, 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 on the back pages, I've got um, some, some information from the Spirit of Prophecy. And I'm just going to read just, just a little bit from it, and I'm going to start at the beginning. And it says, the first great deception. What is the great lie that was led that has led to all the suffering and misery we see in, t in the world today. Who told that lie? And what is, is the hope that promises to end this catastrophe of evil? With the earliest history of man, Satan began his efforts to deceive our race. So he was talking to uh, Adam and Eve at the time, but really, who was he talking to? He was, Adam and Eve was the whole human race at the time. And if you think about it, we were there. We were, in, we were in Adam. When God made Adam, every human being that would ever be born was in Adam. If you read uh, Acts chapter, chapter 17, verse 26, it says that, we, that God made the human race and, and we all came from the same blood. Amen. So, our enemy, Satan, is very... Uh, let, me, let me read just a little bit further. Satan began his efforts to deliver, to deceive our race. And when you look at this deception, and deceived people don't know, do they know they're being deceived? No. If you're being deceived and you don't know it, that's, that's basically what you call someone that's deceived because they don't realize that they're being deceived. And, and Eve... Bless her heart, she was being deceived. And uh, she had been warned, had she not been warned by God, that there would be someone that would come and try to deceive her one day. Well, this, this is the test. And I, I don't want to point my finger just at Eve because we're all going to get the same test. And we probably, most likely, if you're over you know, two years old, <laughs> or, or if you're mature, you have already been tempted by it by this deceiver. And I, I say uh, that uh, because I, I've read the Scripture and it... Um, let me go to that Scripture. This is the first time I've used this tablet to, to preach and y'all pray for me that I hit the right buttons. Whoa. I just hit the wrong button. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay. Uh, deception. I have lost my place. Anyway, we have an enemy and he is going to deceive us. Or he has deceived us and we know who, that he deceived Eve because if you look around this world, we are in a pretty sad state. I mean, this world is, uh, is terrible. I, I, I could think of better words, but they're not. Any... Now, after Eve sinned, she for she. She was used to. Uh, 
she was using the deception of her not her her husband. Yeah, I'm just lost. <laughs> Give me a second to get get back and say she was the hook. She was the hook. Very good, Ray. But that doesn't bring me back to where I need to be. <laughs> anyway, her husband Adam uh, realized that she had she had sinned, and God had told them that if they had eaten from that tree, that they were going to die. And Adam realized that Eve was going to die, and he I. And this, this is not scriptural, but I believe that Adam did not want to live without Eve. So he decided that I'm going to eat this apple also, or this, this fruit. Hence the hook. Thank you, Ray. Anyway, uh, one thing led to another, and, and uh, they were kicked out of the garden. And they... And before they were kicked out of the garden, God had given them the, uh, the i got to go to that verse. This is where I need to stay in Scripture and just uh, allow the Holy Spirit to talk to me. He says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now this seed is, uh, as we know now, and, and they didn't know then, was Jesus Christ. So, they were given the promise of a seed, but the, the promise of a family, that, that all the, it says that all the families of the earth would be blessed, and that was through who? This, it was through Abraham. In Galatians, in Galatians chapter 12, Starting with verse 1, it says, Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and, thy, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. How many families of the earth? All the families of the earth shall be blessed. You know, I got stuck like this last week too. <laughs> Y'all pray for me please. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, it says, and to the law, it says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, when, when uh, Lucifer or Satan in the garden, um, he came and he usurped or he indwelt. The serpent. And according to uh, the spirit of prophecy, this was the most, one of the most beautiful creatures in the garden. And, and so Eve was really attracted to this serpent. And I believe today that Satan is using the same ploy that he used with Eve on us. Now, when Peter and Jesus were going to Jerusalem, Jesus was talking about going to the cross. And he was, caught, he was talking about, I must leave you. And Peter says, certainly not. You're not going to do this. And when Peter, when Jesus looked at Peter, he says, Get thee behind me, Satan. For 
from the garden, Satan was speaking through the serpent. From two and some uh, four thousand years later, he's speaking through Peter. Now, that's that's kind of hard. That's that's kind of hard for us to fathom. But if Jesus is is right there, you would think that you know the angels are there and, and they would be guarding. You know, they wouldn't allow this to happen. But somehow. Satan has a way to speak through anybody. I don't think he can speak through Jesus because Jesus is the Holy Spirit within him. And I don't believe that Satan can speak through those who are filled with the Holy Spirit also. But those that aren't uh, filled with the Holy Spirit can be spoken through. Now, I hear somebody say something. They're deceived. They're deceived. Very good. They can be deceived. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can be deceived. Now, we're talking about Israel. The world, and I'm talking about the, the whole world, is focused where today? They're focused on Israel. And we're talking about the world. Now, if we look at Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28, who is Jesus coming back for when He comes back? Israel. He's coming back for Israel. It says he's coming back for his church. He's coming back for his bride. There's only are there one church or are there two churches? Now there's a there there's a there's a talk of a temple being built in in Israel. That's the talk of the world, really. They're they're talking about the rebuilding of the temple in Israel. But where is the true temple now? In heaven, where is the where is the true Jerusalem now? In our hearts, the Holy Spirit. We are the where where is the true temple now? I mean, where is? I'm sorry, you you're right, Janice. But where is the where is the the new Jerusalem now? It's in heaven. In First uh, Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen, it says, "Know ye not that ye are the temple of God?" And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him God shall destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So we're the temple on this planet now. So the, the, the talk of building a new temple, why would we need a new temple? We're the temple of God. If you look in, uh, it's... Uh, Well, it kind of depends on how, how you read the scriptures. If you read the scriptures to be literal, or if you read the scriptures to be spiritual. And well, you said the word right there, Janice. It goes back and forth. So, you said the word right there. Is it, is it spiritual, or is it literal? Amen. Amen. Trying to find a certain uh... now Israel at the time well, the 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 Pharisees at the time represented Israel the Pharisees and the Sadducees and uh, he, they're having a conversation with Jesus and uh, and Jesus tells them and he's talk, he says to the Pharisees you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So he, and he, he's, he's talking to Israel and he says, who does he, call, who, who does he say their father is? He says, it's the devil.
So it says in uh, John 3.16, which was my text last week, it says, For God so loved the Jew that He gave His only begotten Son. No? He said, For God so loved the world. God loved us all. It, it, it is, how many, how, a few minutes ago I asked, how many churches do we have, does Jesus have? One church. Is there... So is Jesus coming back for another church after He leaves, comes, comes and gets this church? Nope. So the temple... Jesus is in a temple right now. It says, How be it that the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. So where's Jesus now? Amen. And He's where? He's, it says that he, he is in, our, he's in the sanctuary. And what part of the sanctuary is He in? The Most Holy. And what is in that Most Holy place? What is the most important thing in the Most Holy place? The Ten Commandments, uh, Him, and 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 He is actually a, a representative of the Ten Commandments. I mean, He is that's, that's who His character is. Amen. And where does He want to be? We're, and the temple in us, if we're allowing Him, if He's cleansing the sanctuary at, as we speak now. And as He cleanses the sanctuary, He's cleansing each one of us, and we're His temple. So what? The temple in heaven has the Ten Commandments. We're, what what does that presuppose? That we have the Ten Commandments in our hearts. Thank you. We be more like Jesus. Amen. And I got thirty more minutes to go. Uh, anyway, so. In, uh, in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the, twinkling, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. Have you heard, heard that expression For The trumpet shall sound. Would that be like a little beep? Or would that be a, a giant trumpet? It says... And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, what is this noise I hear about a secret rapture coming from the other churches? It says uh, that in, uh, I believe it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. So everybody that sleeps, in, that's everybody that's died before us, correct? It says, For this we say unto you, the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with a shout with the voice of the archangel that's just going to be pretty loud and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive shall remain and be caught up together with them in the clouds now, I said all that to say this. Satan lied to Eve. Satan got Peter to say something to Jesus. How am I to... Am, am, if I'm watching the news on television and this is not uh, someone filled with the Holy Spirit, can Satan speak through them? If I'm watching uh, the uh, evangelists on television, 
I mean, dressed to the T, speaks perfect English, which you, you're not getting today, perfect English. He, he speaks perfect English. He looks perfect. His hair is perfect. He says all the right things. Did, did Satan say all the right things to Eve? Are we being lied to when we watch anything on television? How do we know we're not being lied to? How do we know? We don't know. We don't know. Do our, do we, we have an enemy. The enemy wants us dead. Does our enemy not want us dead? Could, could God have stopped Eve from taking the fruit. Why didn't he? Amen. So is he is the worst people in the world is is he going to stop their choices? And who are they communicating with through the airwaves? They're communicating with us if we watch that garbage. So how can we be immune? Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to be... Who is our teacher and our God? So if somebody tells me that a rapture is going to happen, a secret rapture, I can pull this book out right here. That is uh, Isaiah 8 and verse 20. I, I'm, I, as a matter of fact, I've got it right here. It says, To the law... And to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. When you're talking about this book, right here, and that's what we're talking about, according to this word, if you break, if you keep nine of the Ten Commandments, let's put it this way, if you're doing 99% of everything correctly, and you're doing, and you and you you got like one percent sin in your life. Are you going to be in? Are you going to be burned up with those who have ninety nine percent of sin in their lives? If you got one percent, so all Satan has to do is slip by one little lie and and, and get it in your mind. I'm not saying he is. I, I I'm I'm not. Um, I'm not trying to be derogatory or upset or mean about it. I am speaking to you that you need to pay close attention to what you hear from the Scriptures. Even if the man looks good and he sounds good and he talks good and he writes good, I mean, this Israel deception started with, what, what's the name of that, uh, Spurgeon Ray? No, the, uh, not Spurgeon, uh, Schofield. This deception started with Schofield. I, don't, I can't remember the year that that Bible came out, but the Bible has study notes in it. And it's been out for 100, over 100 years, maybe 200 years. Schofield has been around for a long time. But they have taken their study Bible, the Schofield Study Bible, and they have read this, their Bible so much that they have blended the Bible with the Schofield Study Notes. And, and some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is where the Israel deception has come from. And uh, we were supposed to be raptured out of here in 1981. Uh, the Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. And I read, the, <laughs> I read the book. I wasn't an Adventist at the time, but I read the book. And it's very uh, <laughs> persuading. Jesus was kind of, The secret rapture was in 1981, and then in 1988, he came back again to get the rest of the people. And what that did for... And, for, as far as I'm concerned, what it did to people was it, it convinced people that, okay, you know, if the rapture happens, I'm okay. i got seven more years. you got a second chance. And there are no second chances. God has warned us.